All right, I'm in quite a predicament here. I'm, I'm recording with a, a very, very crappy lavalier microphone. Uh, all of my USB microphones have blown out mysteriously, and my mixing board, my favorite mixing board that I've had for years, decided to take a shit right at the same time. Very strange. So I need to... Uh, get some new mics and replace some stuff. Anyway, I'm posting this video, reposting it. It's old. I have a bunch of videos on this stuff. The reason why I'm doing this is I've received many, many, many weird comments from people saying, why, why aren't you talking about body area networks? Why aren't you talking about body area networks and HBC and all that stuff? And I have. I've been talking about the sensitizers and everything, dirty boards and everything that makes this stuff operate within the body for years and years. I have no idea how people think that I don't talk about it. <laughs> it's, it's amazing to me. But I'm going to repost this video from a couple years ago, at least to get the people up to speed that don't realize that I've been talking about this stuff for a long time. So for the rest of you, if you want to watch it and you haven't seen it before, totally cool. For those who have been bugging me about this as if I'm like ignoring it, the, all the info is right here. So uh, that's it for now. Look out for Charlie. Enjoy the video. Scientists who discovered quite by accident these signals being sent. We have been lulled into a trance. Please understand, they are safe as long as they are not discovered. They want their weapons. Look out for Charlie. I want that son of a bitch I remember way back in 2013, 2014, when I was just going online and communicating with a few people here and there. And I got this email from this guy and it was a schematic it was this dual ultrasonic sound cannon heterodyning system that he thought was in a neighbor's shed pointed at his house which was heterodyning a very audible frequency which made sense but made sense if it was 1979 or 1980 they don't need any of that anymore I know I've said that a million times, but today is a very special day because today is the day that you learn the terms that they use. I remember getting this email with this sound cannon and it said, you know, this is what they're using and by the way, get off this heavily monitored channel and start using blah, 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 blah. And I was like, what? You know, if you're monitored, if somebody's monitoring you, it doesn't matter what you're using in the... 21st century they can monitor you I mean your keyboard sends a signal every key you tap you know way back in the 70s they had key capture radio waves that would capture every keystroke that you made on a keyboard anyway let's get to the to the raw stuff you want to know what they call it for a long time I had this term I kept thinking about it and it, and it was a term that I kind of like made up but I actually didn't make it up this term was uh, human ground loop one night recently I decided to start searching human ground loop and what became of that was to change the whole course of this because of what I rediscovered in my journey as I searched human ground loop I ran into many many things what we need to do is stop using these ridiculous terms like electronic harassment and targeted individual and all that stuff and all these ridiculous words that are just weaponized against you. It just sounds ridiculous. I mean, for one, it's not electronic harassment. It's, it's torture to people, for one. And two, you know, targeted individual. It's just so dramatic. 
It just sounds bad. The optics are bad. Everything is bad about it. It's just like the dude that runs geoengineering watch, and he doesn't like the term chemtrails. He wants people to use geoengineering because when you use that, people take you seriously. Well, in my search of human ground loop, I rediscovered what they are using and how they're using it. And it goes through with the graphene and everything else that I talked about. And those terms are human body communication. This is what they call it. It's called HBC for short. So, what is human body communication? This stuff has been around for a long time. This is one of the first uh, articles that I found. While I was first searching human ground loop, this is what I found, and it was evaluation of ground loop through the floor in human body communication. So, human body communication, HBC, is a wireless transmission method that utilizes the human body as part of the transmission medium. A signal is transmitted by weak electric current through the human body and by capacitive coupling between transmitter, receiver, human body, and floor. Capacitive coupling with the floor is often included in the transmission models of human body communication. The human ground loop. That was on my mind for a long time. So, if you want to get deeper into this, I suggest you quit researching electronic harassment and start researching human body communication. That's what this is. That's what we're dealing with. Human body communication, HBC, also termed intrabody communication, is a novel transmission technique using the human body as the transmission medium for electrical signal transfer. HBC has become one of three physical layers. Another two are narrow band and UWB for bands. A band is a body area network. This is what they call it. What you are being attacked with is a perverse form of human body communication. And you might be thinking, hmm, well, it sounds promising. No, this is, this is it. This is what they're using. And I want you to see this. I told you about the graphene and all that years ago. The one thing that you have to watch for are slick legal terms. When they call something a wearable device, wearable can mean a multitude of things. Wearable can mean a wristwatch. Wearable can mean a temporary tattoo. Wearable can mean a permanent tattoo. Wearable can mean something on your skin that you don't even know is there. This is electro quasi-static human body communication. And we are talking millivolts that people are using. And do you see the layers on the skin? What do you think the graphene that I talked about in other videos is doing? Exactly this. This is human body communication with the body area network. And what they're touting it as, and what I've always said, is they hide this stuff in the medical industry, in the psychiatric industry. Look at, they're showing pacemakers. It's going to save lives because everybody's going to need a pacemaker. Now check this out. In scientific reports on nature.com, we have enabling covert body area network using electro quasi static human body communication enabling covert body area network radiative communication using electromagnetic fields amongst the wearable and implantable devices act as the backbone for information exchange around a human body what this does is it only comes out a couple millimeters and after that it falls back down into the noise void, down to the floor. So, they tout that as safe. That way no one can hack you because they would have to literally be touching you to hack you. Therefore, it's safe to be on their human body network, which they're not telling people can run and does run right through 
the power grid, and everywhere else. I'm going to show you everything. We're going to get there. So they keep mentioning wearable and implantable devices. And those are, like I said, for uh, patents, for all these different types of uh, articles. You have these very, very vague legal terms, wearable. A hat is wearable. Like I said, tattoos are wearable. Graphene growing on your skin with fungus and shuanella is also wearable. This is human body communication, which is funny because one of the first things I ever thought of was misuse of medical equipment. I'll never forget those words, misuse of medical equipment. The wireless body area network has been the de facto standard for connecting these tiny energy sparse devices. What happens is, as they turn the power up, they lose signal. There's signal leakage, if you will. And what they have to do is get the power, the kilobytes, and everything else, get the power, the kilobytes, and everything else down as low as they can. All of this wraps together. Here is design of intrabody nano communication network for future nano medicine. The intrabody is the same as human body communication. Everything that I've talked about gets wrapped up in a nice neat little package when you research this. This is what it is. This is what they're using and right now it is in its full-on weaponized stage. We talked about graphene for a long time I've talked about graphene and here it says luckily graphene based nano transceivers and nano antennas are expected to implicitly operate within the terahertz frequency band they're already doing shit like this but it's not what people think it is this is really really low level tech compared to what they have what they're using on the masses right now it's like a jalopy so far, we have human body communication using electricity and electrostatic electricity around the human body in such little voltage, such little voltage that they say that it, it needs no battery. We talked about graphene. There's the graphene. All of it wrapped up. Here's a graphic where they show uh, noise, noise sources, which are cell and Wi-Fi 2.4 gigahertz and that would be the noise signal and then sh here they show these these signal receiver and signal transmitter as though it's a wearable device but the wearable device again could be something on your skin that you don't even know is there hence covert human body communication this is amazing because this is where they just flat out admit some of the uses for these nano substances that we've been saying are out there and they go no 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 that's craziness conspiracy craziness right so here's the nano material graphene oxide and what does that do detect low level of cancer cells single walled carbon nanotubes monitor blood nitric oxide level in incendiary illnesses magnetic nanoparticles allows constant checking the micro vessels in the blood. Gold nanoparticles coated with influenza antibodies detect flu infection in test. Gold nanoparticles to a mass radiation utilized as part of radiation treatment to treat disease tumors. Nanocrystalline silver, antimicrobial operator for treatment of wounds. Do you see where this is going? They are just flat out saying it. Why? Because just like the term geoengineering, the term you guys and myself and everybody else has been looking for is human body communication. If you have been looking for information on all those ridiculous terms, electronic harassment, targeted individuals, start looking up body area networks, uh, electro quasi static human body communication or just human body communication or HBC that is what this is that is all this is and let's go through 
some of it. I'm just going to look. Everything that you've been looking for is in here. This is leakage. When you see a drawing of, you know, somebody depicting what being a quote-unquote targeted individual is, that's, this, that's what these drawings are. Look at, it's all there. Now, this shows how it's modulated. And they use an on and off type modulation, which is basically like uh, if you were to listen to a vibrato cranked all the way so it's literally cutting the signal. That's what this type of modulation is. Now if you look, here's a, a simplified communication circuit model. Now if people really knew how simplified this was and how organic it was, they would be very, very pissed off say the least. But they're talking about impedance, high impedance, voltage drops, signal loss, all that through all this. And they, they've been talking about this for years. Human body communication. That is what we're dealing with. In Science Daily, there's a whole article about making the human body internet more effective. So it is absolutely in use and what these do-gooders out there that think they're saving the world, you know, people that need pacemakers are going to be using this. They have no idea that it's already in use and it's weaponized. Because there's a lot of young kids and college people that they have doing their dirty work for them to push this further. They don't realize that the AI, the Norman Bates AI, and human body communication have been fused together, creating a psychopathic AI. This changes the game. This absolutely and totally changes the game. If you research Shuanella, graphene, fungus, human body communication, HBC, infrabody communication, all of this is tied together. And everything that I've been saying for the last years is sewn up with this so tightly that as of now, I am at the belief that it can't be anything but. And they've just figured an easy way to do this in mass. And it has to exist on existing infrastructure. Now, when did this go buck wild? It went crazy after... 2001, after the cellular network was up, after free Wi-Fi was everywhere, there was another bump after smart meters. You know, there's always been these bumps. There was a huge bump in the 90s uh, with HARP. You have this history of waves coming in of this. And one thing to consider as well is just because they say HARP is offline, HARP was a field of antennas. Now, the world, and let's say just the United States, is a giant field of cellular towers that could quite literally do the same thing. If you've ever seen the power that is actually going to a, a cell tower, it's immense. Even though it's supposed to run on low power, there's high power there. And that could be the giant harp-like antenna array is your cellular network. So, you know, it's, I keep trying to get back into music and make music again, and it's just so hard and seems so trite and clown worldy when this is the real deal. I would rather do this 24-7, but we are getting closer and closer every day, and as of right now, this is it. It's human body communication. So I will uh, be back soon with more information. Look out for Charlie.